now regions and empires good morning everyone today we'll be beginning with a new topic regions and empires large states like those of the cholas tughlaqs or mughals encompassed many regions encompass means they occupied many regions right cholas were the rulers tughlaqs mughals they when they had come to india these uh, mughals when they had come to india a large area was under their control large states were under their control they were the ruler of a large empire a sanskrit prashti that praises delhi sultan balban tells that he was ruler of a vast empire that stretched from bengal in the east to ghazni in afghanistan in the west and included all of the south india now you, you can imagine the area the vast area which was under the control of uh, delhi sultan balban the entire india and even the areas of afghanistan people of different regions goda andhra kerala karnataka maharashtra and gujarat apparently fled before his armies there were considerable conflicts between various states occasionally dynasties like the cholas khaljis tughlaqs and mughals were able to build an empire that was span regional that is spanning diverse region you know diverse areas were under their control it was not only north india it was even south india east and west you know diverse areas were under the control of these rulers a large area a vast area came under the control of these rulers not all these empires were equally stable or successful but yes the success of these rulers right it wasn't the same though they had you no know, though they had huge dynasties though they had built up large dynasties though they had you know conquered large areas but still success was different for different dynasties when the mughal empire declined in the 18th century it led to the emergence of regional states but years of imperial that is your britishers had come to india when when the mughal empire finally declined in the 18th century your britishers had already come to india and they had start they had taken the control of the indian states across most of the subcontinent the regions were with the legacies of the big and small states that had ruled over them this was apparent in the emergence of many distinct and shared tradition, traditions in the realms of governance the management of the economy elite cultures and language now across most of the subcontinent the regions were left with the legacies of big and small states that had ruled over them means you know these legacies these leaders they have left an uh, they have left a mark of their rule on every state they had ruled whether it was the culture which reflected their rule or whether it was the economy or whether it was the language right every everything you know somewhere or the other denoted that yes you know they had a mix of culture because they have been ruled by various rulers now class the same topic will be studying will be having a discussion of the same topic from your ncert book as well now coming to region and empire from your ncert book large states like those of the cholas which will be studying in chapter 2 tughlaqs about whom will be studying in chapter 3 or mughals about whom will be studying in chapter 4 and encompassed many regions a sanskrit prashasti praising uh, praising these delhi sultan giyasuddin balban you know giyasuddin balban ruled india from 1266 to 87 right explained that he was the ruler of a vast empire that stretched from bengal in the east to ghazni that is gajana in afghanistan in the west and included all of south india people of different regions goda andhra pradesh kerala karnataka maharashtra and gujarat apparently fled before his armies attacked 
Now look over this map. This map shows the rule till where your, you know, the, this, uh, the areas which came under the control of your Delhi Sultanate. Provinces of the Delhi Sultanate during Muhammad Tughlaq's reign, according to Egyptian source, Masalik Al Masalik Al Abrar. Okay, so this is the map, or we can have a zoom look also of this. So if you see. This is the map. This is the area which came under the control of the Muhammad Tughlaq. And you see there is a vast area under his control. Right? So provinces of the Delhi Sultanate during Muhammad Tughlaq's reign. According to the Egyptian source Masalik al-Absar fi Mamalik al-Amsar of Shihabuddin Umari. Now, this is the name of the Egyptian person who has, you know, made this map. Now, historians regard these as historians regard these as exaggerated claims of conquest. Now, historians say, come on. The maps which they are showing, the, the, these large areas came under their control. It's just an exaggeration. They are trying to, you know, just exaggerate it. They are, it's not the reality. They are only, you know, like you can say, uh, what do we call it in Hindi? Badhava Dena. Right? They are trying to show it off. It's a show off. These areas in reality were not under their control. It's just that historians are trying to show off. At the same time, they try to understand why rulers kept claiming to have control over different parts of the subcontinent. Now, by 700, many by 700, many regions already possessed distinct geographical dimensions and their own language and cultural characteristics. About language and cultural characteristics we'll be studying in chapter 9. They were also associated with specific ruling dynasties. Definitely, you know, which, uh, which dynasty has ruled you or which ruler has ruled you. That impression is left on that region. That impression is left on, that, uh, on the people of those region. Right? How? By the culture, by the economy, by the architecture. These rulers have left their mark on the regions, on the areas where they have ruled. Their, you know, the, the, the symbols of their dynasties can still be seen through architecture, through the culture which, you know, which, people's, which people are still following, right? The, uh, through the kind of tradition, through the kind of architecture or the way, or the way they're administering things, that kind of culture could still be seen in the people. So you will learn about more about these in chapter 9. They were also associated with specific ruling dynasties. There was considerable conflict between these states. Occasionally, dynasties like the Cholas, Khaljis, Tughlaqs and Mughals were able to build an empire that was pan-regional, means spanning diverse region. Not all of these empires were equally stable or successful. Compare, for example, table 1 in chapter 3 and 4. What was the duration of rule of Khalji and Mughal dynasties? Now, Mughals have said to be ruled, you know, they have ruled India for almost 300 years. More than 300 years, Mughals have ruled India. Now, when the Mughal Empire declined in the 18th century, it led to the re-emergence of regional states. But years of imperial means when you the imperialization, the Britishers had come to India. Pan-regional rule had altered the character of the regions. You now, regional means, you know, uh, earlier the entire area was coming under the control of Mughal Emperor. Mughal dynasty. But as soon as the Mughal Empire declined, the regional culture, the regional states, they began to emerge in India. Right? The regional culture began to emerge in India. The states began to be divided into regions. 
in spite of no, you no know, calling themselves as a part of mughal empire you know the there was a division of states there was a division of culture but your britishers had put a halt on this your britishers had come and they had put a halt on this they had taken the control they had taken the governance of control govern, they have taken the governance of india under their control across most of the subcontinents the regions were left the regions the regions were left with the legacies of the big and small states that ruled over them this was apparent in the emergence of many distinct and shared traditions in the realms of governance the management of the economy elite cultures and language through the thousand years between 700 and 1750 the character of the different regions did not grow in isolation they felt the impact of larger pan regional forces of integration without ever quiet losing their distinctive distinctiveness through thousand years between 700 and 1750 the character of the different regions did not grow in isolation means they felt the impact of larger pan regional forces on them but they never lost their distinctiveness they never lost their origination now old and new regimes about this topic we'll be beginning to disc- you know we'll will discuss about this topic in our next lecture about old and new religions it is a new topic which we'll be discussing in this chapter right so we'll have a brief, uh, we'll have a detailed discussion of this topic in our next lecture meanwhile go through the lecture whatever queries you people are having you can con- you can you know note down your queries and you can contact me through your whatsapp group thank you